What's going on, everybody? Hey, I have I have this this overwhelming feeling in my heart and frustration with what's going on with the people who we supposed to trust, the people who are to provide us with accurate, congruent, relative, responsible information, and they are consistently failing us. And good morning, everybody. But this is this is this is why I'm making this video, man. Because I was doing I was doing a live YouTube feed yesterday, and we were talking, and somebody had mentioned that there was an active situation. They were on a manhunt for a young man who had who had um, shot his two parents, and it happened at his university right before spring break. So I was reading the articles on on the live feed. And I was talking about it and we were going through it. And I read the details of what the article entailed. It re literally described a deranged young man who had been had police involvement a few days before because he was being a troubled student. He ended up going to going to the hospital for an overdose. And a few days later, his parents come to pick him up for spring break. And he decides to shoot and kill both of them on campus. Now. Uh, man, that's a tragic situation. I understand it's a tragic situation. That's I don't know what's going on in that kid's life and that kid's family, but for you to shoot and kill both of your parents, something ain't going right. So your kid shooting you and killing you, something ain't right. Something is not right. It seems like drugs may have been a factor. But this is the reason why I'm making this video. It's because I decided to say, you know what? Let me let me look at this. Let me let's look at this real quick because when why is this not blown up and it's such a tragedy and all this other stuff? And then I looked at the suspect was black and his parents were black. And then the ball started rolling this morning. I said, well, let me, let me see. Let me see how this is being covered on, on CNN. I just want to check it out. I just want to see. I just want to see if they if they're covering it. And I looked through, they say, oh, they found, they found a person or whatever. I looked back a couple, a couple posts ago and it says, this is the 12th school shooting of the year first of all this is what this is what makes me mad about mainstream media and it's what made me mad about cnn and the lies that they they try to tell us to brainwash us i don't understand how anybody that works for that network can go to sleep at night understanding that you are manipulating and lying to the masses the 12th shoot this has already been debunked First of all, this has already been debunked that there's not 12 school shootings this year. That's absolutely stupid. But this is the problem that we see. Let me explain to you guys. And I feel like I'm speaking to the choir. But if there is somebody that see this video that, that may be uninformed or may not be aware of reality, then I, I'm going to break it down for you. There is a difference between a active school shooting and a shooting at a school. There is a major difference. Now, mainstream media wants you to think that it's the same thing so they can ban guns and do all that other stuff. There is no reason in the world a, a news organization should report, should write down, should post, should even utter out of their mouths that this is the 12th school shooting of the year. When they know, they know that there is a difference between a shooting at a school and a school shooting. This kid was involved in an isolated incident involving himself and his parents. This is not a school shooting. This is a kid who shot his parents and it happened to be at his dormitory. That does not count as a school shooting. This kid was not on a rampage. This kid did not go to the school looking to kill innocent people. His parents would have been killed there or in the car or at the house. He decided to kill them in his dormitory. This is the problem resid you know, residually with the mainstream media intentionally lying to us. Is that people who cannot think for themselves, who may be misinformed or who already have a cognitive bias are going to go down a path of thinking this is reality. And when you think that it's reality, you begin to act on it. You begin to be ignorant and go out and demand that you remove guns and demand that this is a this is some somewhat of a crisis 
because you are influenced to think that it's 12 school shootings this year. That's absolutely ridiculous. We've already determined that it's only been three. Other school shootings involve a, a, a bullet hitting a building at a school, which the shooting occurred off campus. A kid, I guess, manipulating a cop's gun. I guess he was trying to look at it. He shouldn't have been touching it. And the, and the gun went off. They called that a school shooting. Like, these people know that these are not school shootings, but they want you to believe that they are so they can manipulate you. I look on CNN and I'm looking at all the feed and I'm going to get the Fox in a minute. I'm going to get the Fox in a minute. I, I look at CNN and I, and I look, I look through the feed and all they're talking about is assault rifles and gun control and banning assault. Like this just makes no sense at all. But, but see what they won't do is they don't try to push the issue with this kid probably using a handgun murdering both his parents. They can't use the scenario. So they let it go because this kid I more than likely, I believe he used the handgun and killed both of his parents. They love to, to make it inflammatory by saying that it was a school shooting, but they're not going to talk about that this kid was black and they're not going to talk about this kid used the handgun to kill both of his parents. They're not going to talk about that because it doesn't fit their agenda. Who are you banning assault rifles from? Who are you banning assault rifles from? You're not banning them from the bad guys. They already got them. You're not going to ban it for me because you ain't going to get mine. You ain't going to get mine. That thing ain't going to be missing when you come to get mine. It's going to be missing. I'm telling you right now, you can have it on the record. It is missing. I don't know. Maybe I see, I, I prophesy, I'm prophesying that, that that gun ain't going to be here when you try to come get it. I can see the future. But. I don't understand what the push is, you know, and a lot of us think that the government is trying to literally de disarm us so that they can have more control in the future. They can have even complete control over us. There is no reason on planet Earth that there's millions of guns and most people would never do a shooting. Most people would never do anything illegal with their legal guns. Most people will never do it. Now, why on planet Earth do we think that it's such an issue that we should ban from everybody? Well, let me tell you something. Let me let, let me explain this real quick. You will never get all the rifles off of the streets. You will never get it. If you could get all the rifles off the street, there will be nobody dying with illegal guns. You can, you're can. you never going to get it. You're not going to get mine, and you're probably not going to get anybody else's. See, I'm, a very, I'm an amateur. I don't own that many rifles. I know people who have... 10, 15 rifles. Do you think that they're going to let you have all 15 of their rifles? I think not. Do you think you're going to somehow go to the hood somewhere in the ghetto and say, hey, Mr. Drug Dealer, hey, thug on the corner, crip, blood, hey, uh, career criminal, do would you mind giving me your stolen gun? Yeah, the AK-47, the, the MAC-10, can you give me the revolver? Can you, can you give me your stolen weapons, please? Thank you, sir, for giving me all your stolen weapons. And we're going to go to the border and say, hey, Mr. Cartel, wait, before you bring in these illegal guns into our country, do you mind if we take them for our safety? Are you stupid? This is what our government wants us to believe, is that somehow if they ban it, that they're going to confiscate them all. It's not going to happen. It's just like our government telling you that they're going to deport all these illegal people in this country. First of all, you're not going to find all of them. And second of all, it's going to cost billions of dollars to, to get rid of the ones that you can find, which will probably be 20%, 30% of them you probably can find. Same thing with guns. You think somebody come to your property and say, I'm going to take your guns. People will bury their guns underneath their under the ground in their property. If you start taking guns, people will band together in groups. And, and, and put their guns in somebody's house where they can hide them at. And then when the government is finished being stupid, they're going to get their guns back. I, I, I guarantee you. So, but let's go to Fox. Let's go to Fox. I'm going to say this about Fox. I love Fox. I've been on Fox. Fox is probably the most accurate news outlet. I watched Fox the other night and I was like, dang, this is, they, they are, I, I'm, I'm trying to find the bias in Fox News and 90% of the time I'm watching them tell the truth, just basic truth, 
basic truth. I don't know if they're telling the basic truth because their candidate is in the office and it's easy or are they just been always like that because I never really watched the news. But I just decided to watch it. Now, the only thing that I don't like about Fox and, and they do it on CNN, do it on Fox, MSNBC, is when they bring people on the show and they cut them off. Let the man finish his sentence. Because Laura Ingram did this the other day and it made me mad. Because she brought two guys on there. They both happen to be black with opposing views. And then she asked a black guy who typically agreed with her about systematic racism in the school system, which everybody knows that it has been, it has occurred in our history. I mean, nowadays, I don't know, I don't know what you would call it. I don't really think it exists as much nowadays. But back in the day, you cannot deny that there was systematic racism in the school system a, a long time ago, historically. So the guy comes on and says, well, you know what, Laura? She cut him off and say, oh, we all racist. See, that right there is the problem because she didn't have no reason to do that. You know, she could have let the man finish his thought, then jump in and rebut it if it's ignorant. Same thing with Tucker. I've seen Tucker does a good job. Hannity does a good job, but they find themselves cutting people off. And I don't like that. If you're going to bring somebody on, let them finish a thought and then jump in. Don't cut them off when they start disagreeing with you. Don't cut them off when their points start to supersede your point. And I, I've seen them do this on Fox a few times. But majority of the time, they're, they're just giving facts. They're just basic truths. CNN is just a basket case. Complete basket case. MSNBC, I won't even look at MSNBC. I only look at CNN just to figure out what the other side is talking about. And if they have any legitimate points. And nine times out of ten, they don't have any legitimate points. And I would debate anybody on planet Earth that why in the world do, are, are, are people trying to ban rifles? I, I don't understand. Somebody said, let's talk about 3,200 feet per second. Well, let's talk about it. That's fast. And it needs to be that fast. Because if you break in my house... I want these bullets to hit you at 3,200 3, feet per second or more. I don't want them to hit you at 1,700 feet per second. I want them to hit you at 3,000 feet per second. That's why, I, that's, why, that's why I want my rifle. You, you, I don't need it to go 3,000 feet per second to hit kids at a school or to go on a rampage because that's, I'm not going to do that. I have no reason to do anything outside of what the law says I can do. You run in my house, you're going to get rounds at 3,000 feet per second. Unless I can't get to the rifle fast enough, then you're going to get 1,700 feet per second, about. So what's the, what's the real discussion here? I want them rounds to hit you fast as they can go. To be honest, I want them to tear you up. I don't want you to survive if you break in my house and try to, and, and try to hurt my family. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say. Do you want me to be politically correct? No, you're going to die. You come in my house. You're going to die. I'm going to call the police to pick your body up. I'm not calling the police for them to help me. I'm calling them to pick your body up because I, I can't contact the coroner without an investigation. So they need to know that you broke in my house and they need to see you on the ground. And, and I need to, to get a police report so the apartment complex can clean the blood out of the carpet. That's the only re that's the only thing that I'm worried about right now. And maybe I don't know. Maybe I could be reimbursed for my rounds that I spent shooting you to death. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is not Disney World. This is not fairy tale land. Welcome to reality. Welcome to reality. The reason I like my rifle is because those two two threes will eat you up. That's the reason I like it. And I will use it to defend my family and defend other people. If I heard a person out there getting raped or getting hurt, I'm going to take my rifle out there and I'm going to demand that that person stop. If he refused to stop, I'm going to defend that person's life and I'm going to be justified. And if you don't want to get towed up by two, two, three rounds, you're going to listen to what I say or I'm going to defend that person's life by deadly force. That's the way things work in America, ladies and gentlemen. If you somehow want to live in another country, go somewhere else. This world is real. This stuff is real.
This ain't no game. People will come in your house and tie you up and rape you. I seen it. And, and this ain't a game. Now you can you can walk around in fairy tale land and, and, and ha have your front door open, lay in your bed with your family with no gun. And and when it's you, when somebody when, when, when the cartel hit the wrong house and they come in your house and they duct tape you and they rape your family, oops, wrong house, this ain't the drug house. Then why, how are you going to tell your family that that was justified and you didn't want to buy a gun because of what? You stupid. You come in my house, you will be R.I.P. You might as well write down what you want on your tombstone, put it in your pocket, tell your family, get your next to kin notification, put that in your pocket because you come in here, you're going to be R.I.P. At least put your ID there, next to kin notification and what you want, what you want them to put on your tombstone. Because so we can easily get that out of your pocket when, when, when you get blasted up in here. And I don't expect nothing less from no other American. You have the right to protect your family. The police officer, they are coming to assist you. They're not protecting you. They are assisting you. You get caught out there on the street, somebody robbed you at gunpoint. They're not sitting in your passenger seat there to help you. You can call them after you get robbed if you don't get killed. What America, what are you thinking? Everybody that's, that's talking about this stuff and, and being all bait, like grow up, bro. You live in America. You live in a dangerous country. Now you can sit on your fluffy bed and, and, and live in, in, in your high life, but the rest of the country understand what it is. I have seen innocent people get gunned down. And I thought if they had a gun, they would have been able to defend themselves. But instead, they're dead. They're laying here dead. Their family will miss them forever. They don't have a gun. Probably because they're watching CNN rhetoric telling you that somehow guns in and of themselves are bad. This is why our, our founding fathers decided that we could carry our own guns. Let me take, let me give you another secret about the police department. A large police department is averaging two police officers per thousand people. That's large. That is fully manned. Just about. That's majority of the police departments. Maybe not even hitting that. The police department I worked for was like one person per every thousand people. Now you tell me, you tell me that's one gun for every thousand people. Now, if a, if, if a cop with one gun and a thousand people charge that cop with one gun, he, they're going to kill him. He's not going to be able to shoot a thousand people. Now you do two cops, two thousand people, 60 cops. 60,000 people. That is an entire stadium full of people versus 60 cops. Now you tell me that you in your right mind, you are relying on 60 cops that are spread out all over. I mean, talk about a city with a million people. A city with a million people. Yeah, use the math, ladies and gentlemen. Use your math skills. There ain't enough cops to help you when stuff start cracking up. Listen, if a terrorist is somewhere near me, want to act a fool, I'm going to bust his butt. That's exactly what's going to happen. And then I'm going to call the police and say, hey, I shot this man. He presented himself as a terrorist. He had a bomb. He was threatening to kill people. Come pick his body up, please. I need you guys to come get him out the street. It's distracting drivers. I'm not going to be sitting there. What do I do? Police, help me. This guy is shooting people. Oh, he's killing people. Oh, he just killed me. Oh, I'm dead. Tell my family I'm dead. And now, think it won't happen to you. And you're, you're sadly mistaken. If you think that it won't happen to you, you are sadly mistaken. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be naive. See, being a police officer changed my life. I realized that this world ain't good. I realize that there's a lot of crazy people walking around here unhinged that have not gotten medical treatment, that will refuse to get medical treatment, that are on medication that don't take their medication. And they'll kill you with a knife, with a gun, with, with whatever they got in their possession, with a rock. All they got to do is hit you in the head with a rock when you're not looking. Did you get a big one like this? Boom, hit you in your head, you out. And then they keep bashing it on you dead. They don't need a gun. All you got to get is a knife, sharpen it up. You can, you can make you a shank. People make shanks in, in, in jail. 
He can make you a shank. Shank the mess out of a whole bunch of people. Now, when you're naive, you're walking around like, oh, I live in such a free, peaceful America. Nobody's going to hurt me. Ha, that only happens in Chicago. That only happens, yeah. Ride with a police officer for one day. You'll find out that people die almost every day in, the, in, in every city. Every day. People get murdered, killed, shot, drive-bys, stabbings, retaliation. Y'all must get hit by cars. Intentionally. Intentionally. Intentionally running people over with cars. Y'all explain, explain to me. I want, I want a critic to explain to me. Tell me. You know, I, I don't respect the person that say they, that they won't, that they will not purchase a gun to protect their family. Then what are you doing for your family? How are you protecting your family? How? 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 The police? Let me tell let me give y'all a little secret. Let me give you a secret when I when I was a police officer. The most sickening feeling that I had as a police officer was getting a call that a woman is being beaten and the neighbors can hear her screaming. And it sounds like furniture is, you know, like, like dishes are breaking and she's screaming. And I know that none of us are even close to her. None of us. We're coming from way on the east side. And I'm going lights and sirens, 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, residential streets, driving with due regard, going as fast as I can. And it's in the middle of the day and there's traffic and people won't move to the right. So I have to go on opposing traffic. 30 seconds has gone by. She's still getting beat. And I'm thinking to myself, I hope she don't die before we get there because what is she doing? Is she blocking him? Is he just beating her? Is she unconscious? We still got, we, we still at the light at Fort Low and First. People won't move. Okay, now we're at Fort, now Fort Oracle. We got to get across the freeway. It's a minute has already passed. Now we at Miracle Mile and I-10. We still got to get the speedway in seven more miles. I'm going 120 on freeway. She's still getting beat. Now multiple neighbors are calling because she's screaming for her life. Minute and a half. I'm still going pedal, my pedal to the metal. My brakes are burning. They, they, they not even stopping no more. My brakes don't even work. They're smoking. I'm going fast as I can. And when we get there, they don't know what apartment complex she's in. Okay, we running around the apartment complex. We got information that she possibly lived at building 352. Where's building 352 at? You go this way, I go this way. She's still getting her butt kicked. We get there, he gone. She's unconscious. Oh, okay. The police officer will come save you, huh? Y'all, 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 y'all better. Welcome to reality, ladies and gentlemen. Now, yeah, there's been cases where I've been right down the street. Oh, oh, I'm right here. Oh, shoot. It's right. I'm right here. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. That's, you lucky if I'm right there. Oh, I got plenty. I got plenty of stories. I got six years worth of stories of that sickening feeling that I can't get there fast enough. I can't get there fast enough. Car accident. Male hit by a car. Laying on the ground unconscious. 
We're on our way, Code 3. Now, we're going to beat the firefighters there because they can't go as fast as we can. They're performing CPR. They're still performing CPR. The male is unconscious. No longer conscious. We get there, he dead. Now, if we were sitting right there when he got hit by the car, maybe we could have threw him in the ambulance and saved his life. There is a time gap. <laughs> People are so ignorant, man. Me and my boy, we're going to go and do some man on the street stuff, man. I want to I wanna see what people really think because I don't know what magic wand they think that cell phone is. When you getting beat up and stomped out and, and you scared and, and, and trauma is happening in front of you and you ain't never experienced it before, you think you're going to have the wherewithal to call 911 and give your location and be composed? You, you can forget it. People call on the phone, oh my God, I need help. I need help. Somebody shooting somebody. What, what, where are you at? Who's shooting who? How many people? Who is somebody dead? Like they got so many questions they need to ask you and you don't even know how to talk on the phone. That's just delaying us even further. Hope to God they can pick the cell phone tower to get us in a, in a, in a, a confidence rating that's close to you. When we get there, hope to God it's not 15, 20 people around. Can you give us a description of the shooter? Like all of this stuff means something. All of this stuff can be the difference between life and death for you. I, I, I don't understand, man. I told people who've had restraining orders against their boyfriends. I said, look, I'm going I'm to keep it 100 with you. You need to get a restraining order. That restraining order is just a piece of paper. That restraining order don't have a force field. James will come and break that restraining order and nobody will know about it. He will come break that restraining order, kick in your door and beat you to death. We're not sitting right outside your house. You don't have a restraining order police. You need, to, you need to be able to protect yourself. I used to tell women, and most of the time it was women, I used to walk them through how to methodically protect themselves and how to, and how to have a game plan ready. I said, this is your front door. You know, put a chair in front of the front door. Buy you a stopper for the front door. If you can't do that, put the couch in front of the front door. If you can't do none of that, understand how much time is it going to take him to get from the front door to where you at? Have a plan. Lock yourself in the bathroom. Put something in the bathroom. Get you a kitchen knife. Like, get a rock. We come through the door bashing with the rock. Like, have a plan. Don't be sitting there hoping to God that, oh, you violating restraining order. Get out of here. That ain't going to happen. He may want to come out and kill you. Have you a plan in place. Buy you a gun. If you scared of a gun, get you a knife, get you some pepper spray, get you something. Plan for him to come back and try to kill you. And if you plan for that and he never come back, you good. If you plan for it, he come back, you're good. Don't be naive with that piece of paper. I have seen people die with that piece of paper. And see, when you're a police officer, you get, you get intimately involved in these people's lives emotionally. Like, you don't want this young lady to die, or old lady, however, whoever they are. You don't want them to die. You know, you, you, you see the pain in their eyes. You see the fear from them. You know you can't sit here all night and protect them. Anyway, man, I can go on and on about these stories. That's why the government, and that's why our country allows you to have your own firearms. We had a trend of, of, of gang members dressing up like police, running in people's houses. Stealing them, tying them up. Man, be able to protect yourself. And I'm not saying, and, 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 the, and the thing that bothers me the most is these places that say, this is a gun-free zone. No guns are permitted in this facility. Now, their signs have to be reasonably posted, have to be visible. You have to be able to see the sign. If you don't see the sign, then it don't count. If the sign is not visible, if the sign is not uh, upholded to city code, it, then it don't count. But regardless of that, like, man, I don't even want to go in these places. I'm like, man, I'm not going to put my gun away. Like, I just think of how stupid this is. I'm not going to go put my gun away to go in here and get something to eat. Because the only thing making me put my gun away is me looking at a sign and saying, I don't want to get in trouble. Man, somebody else, somebody else can go right in there with a gun. 
And I cannot confirm or deny that I've even gone in a place like that with a gun. I cannot confirm or deny that. I know people that have. All right. And nobody knows. Because there ain't no metal detectors. And you could still carry nobody see the gun. And you go right into a facility that says no guns allowed. Cry me a river. If somebody wants to come do harm, they're going to walk right in that door and start blasting everybody. Y'all, y'all just, it's crazy to me, man. If I had a business, bring your gun in here. Because I know that most of y'all are, <laughs> people, dang, this is just so stupid. Like, if I had a business, bring your gun in my business, right? Because the law-abiding people, I want you to have your gun here. Because you're a law-abiding citizen. You bring your guns in here. The criminal is going to bring that gun in here no matter what I say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> God dang, brother. I don't know how people are so dumb. I don't understand. Like, what do we expect is going to happen? You know what I'm saying? Robbing a liquor store is illegal. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, they don't care that it's illegal. Obviously, people rob liquor store. I'm going to tell you how stupid this is. Circle K... And everybody know this. Circle K has a policy that if something happened in the store, they, their employees can't touch you. They can't get involved. They just let you do it. They have to by their by their code. Everybody on the street know it, so they go in there and they just walk through and they steal all their stuff and they they gotta sit there like this and not move. People are dumb enough to take a gun in there and rob them at gunpoint, which becomes a felony charge. When if you just went and grabbed something, it's a misdemeanor. If you bring a gun in there, now you now you got a felony. Clearly, people go in there and rob with no mask, no gloves. They don't care. It is against the law. They go to court and they get prosecuted. They don't care. Murdering another person will get you life in prison. If you already don't care about getting life in prison, you're not going to care about getting a, a felony that can give you five years in prison. You clearly don't care. I would debate anybody on planet Earth. I would debate anybody on this topic. I don't need to be an expert in the law or nothing to tell you common sense, man. Gun laws mean nothing. I understand that we have to have them in place, obviously, so people don't murder people because they mad. Like, yeah, regular people probably want to murder other people, but they're normal. And they say, well, that's not right. So I'm not going to do it. And then or if, if, if your morality isn't enough, you say, well, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in prison, so I'm not going to do it. OK, people who are deranged don't give a F. They ready to die. Have you ever listened to rap music? These people live in the hood. They don't care. They say, I ain't scared to do the time. Nobody better snitch. You know, there's a lot of people doing the L. That's called a life. Life sentence. A lot of people doing the L. Because they don't care about no laws. <laughs> if laws worked, we wouldn't need police officers. Why would you need a police officer when you got a law already that says you can't speed? People don't care about no speed limit. The speed limit to them means at minimum 65. Go as fast as you can until you get caught. It's what most people what most people look at a speed limit as. Criminals probably don't even see that sign on the door that says no guns allowed. Now, if they want to be strategic, they will. They'll say, okay, no guns here. Most people don't have guns. I can go in here and spray people and I ain't going to get caught. Soft targets. These young people don't want that drama. Trust me. These young people don't want to get shot at. I, I would be shocked. I would be shocked. I would be shocked if a young kid goes crazy with an AR-15 and is shooting while police are shooting at him. I would be shocked. Most police officers probably can't stand up to fire 
if they're getting shot at, they're not composed and shooting. Somebody's going to cower. When you hear them rounds whistling, and you hear them hitting stuff around you, you're either going to stand in there or you're going to cower. A little 17 year old kid that want to hit soft targets don't want that kind of firefight. Grown men don't want that kind of firefight. And, and I'm telling you, these young kids don't want to die. They want to die on their own terms. They want to kill everybody and get captured or they want to kill everybody and then kill themselves. They don't want to go to the front door and get gunned down. They don't know what it's like to feel them bullets, them, them bullets go through their body. They don't know what it's like. That's the prime reason why that's the prime reason why we should have people at these schools who, who have the ability to arm themselves. So that when you come to the door and you hear the first pow, 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 even if they missing, that kid is going to go running, man. That kid ain't finna level that rifle up and shoot while he's getting fired on. That's only people in, I honestly believe that's people who have military experience. That can stand there while they getting shot at. That ain't, like, I ain't never been on the end of that. I've heard shots. I've been in training scenarios. And I have to I have to make up in my mind that I'm going to keep shooting if somebody's shooting at me. I'm just going to just get hit. I'm just going to, I'm just going to blank my mind out and just keep shooting. Try to keep, keep trigger pull, keep aiming, keep getting, you know, keep getting it in. Boom, 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 boom. If I get shot, I'm just going to go down getting shot while I'm shooting. I'm, I'm betting that I shoot better than him. Even if he has a rifle, I'm going to shoot better than him. All I got to do is one in the head. He can miss me. He can, he can nick my arm. Miss me twice. I hit one in the head. He's done. I won. So, I mean, that's the thought that you have when you're a police officer. You don't have to shoot while somebody's shooting at you. But you just better hope your training and skill better than theirs. People... I'm telling you, man, cops do this all the time, and there's no shame of them. It's just the fact that this is not normal. When they get into a shooting, they miss most of the rounds because you're not sitting at a stagnant target hitting a piece of paper like we do in qualification. Man, somebody's shooting at you. You scared? You you probably feeling them bullets hitting you, and you you moving, you falling, you running, and all kind of stuff. Man, you, you, ain't, you ain't gonna be accurate like that. And you telling me a young kid that probably has never shot an AR-15 before is going to go into a school and hit accurate shots? No. He start hearing them shots coming at him, he's going to be panicking. He's going to be swinging them high, dropping them low, you know, yanking on the trigger. You know, like that, all that stuff matters, man. That, dude, that kid didn't have no vest on. All you have to do is hit him in the head and the chest. Boom, 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 boom. You get three shots on him, he can shoot 15 shots. He missing. And now I'm assuming that he'll get you, but I don't know if out of 15 shots, but I mean that's a chance you gotta take. That's a chance that you just gotta take. If you lose, you lose, you dead. You ain't gonna remember nothing. But if you win, man, you'll be a hero. And if they shoot you, you don't always die, man. You know, you might, you not, you might be able to, they may be able to save you. But you can't sit outside the school and, and do nothing. I mean, that's that's something that you can't do. But anyway. So many of y'all on here that I feel like I just had to keep talking. But I got stuff to do today. But I just had to talk about CNN for a minute. And I'm telling you, man, I, I wish that somebody would argue with me. I go on national TV and argue with somebody. Because you can have you can have more knowledge than me. You can have more knowledge than me. You can understand legislation in the Second Amendment better than me. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this stuff is based on common sense. Now, I know it's dark over here. I just got to charge my phone up. I'm going to keep talking. I'm to charge this phone up. At the, end, at the end of the day, this ain't really working right. Let's see if I can go over here. My tripod's too high, and I don't feel the same. And I got a ride later. 
only got 2%. So I'm going to get off here, man. I've been talking up. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. I think I think my name now is gonna be common sense conservative. That's, that's, that's what I am. Common sense conservative take. Common sense. I don't have a PhD. I have common sense. Maybe I say I have a PhD in common sense. And that's what people need. Brain me on CNN. I call all them fools. Up. They can argue and say all they want. Fools. Hey, see y'all later. I know my pictures probably cutting up. I see watching all this other stuff. Um, so I said, why did I, why did I watch CNN? Because I don't know what the enemy is talking about, to be honest. That's why I watch both. I watch Fox and I look at CNN every now and again because I want to know what they're talking about. I want to know what angle they're using when they're talking about gun control. So therefore, if I get into a debate with somebody, I already know what angle they're using. You know. Phineas, stop it. But anyway, I'm out of here. Hey, my website coming out soon. I'm going to let y'all know when that drops. I see the app is coming out in a long time. But as we get closer, I'm going to remind y'all again. But uh, go follow me on Instagram at, what is my Instagram? TatumBoy34. Follow me on YouTube at Brandon Tatum. Just look up Brandon Tatum. Um, I'm on Twitter at the Officer Tatum. Let's see what else I got. Those are the ones I use. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Those are my favorite ones. And if you want this shirt, a lot of people like this shirt. If you want this shirt and this dog, you can have this dog too with the shirt. He comes with the shirt. Now I'm just playing. If you like this shirt, I'm going to put a link in this shirt in the, in the, uh, in the comment section. Click on the link. Make sure you click on the link. Don't go and find it somewhere else. Click on the link for this shirt. I will provide the link for you if you like this shirt. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good evening. Or it's not even evening yet. It's morning. I tell you what. My time zone's off. Y'all have a good morning.